If you have watched some of our other videos, you have learned a lot about the key components of a randomized controlled trial. You may be thinking, that's great, but what about the results? Sometimes it's hard to make sense of the numbers and use them in real life. In this two-part video series, we're going to take away some of the complexities of statistics so you can make sense of all those numbers. We will discuss the important pieces of information that help us interpret findings from randomized controlled trials comparing one intervention, for example, exercise, to another intervention, for example, manipulation, no intervention, or a placebo intervention. There are two key pieces of information to pay attention to, the point estimate, otherwise known as the effect size, and the confidence interval. In this video, we will focus on the point estimate. There are two components of a point estimate, size and direction. The size of the effect refers to how big or small the difference in outcome is between two groups. The direction of the effect tells us whether patients improved or worsened, or which group did better. The effect estimate should always be interpreted clinically. You can ask yourself, is this change likely to be meaningful to the patient? To answer this question, we need to consider what the outcome is, the scale range, and some minimum threshold that we might consider to be clinically meaningful to patients. For example, if we're looking at a pain scale ranging from 0 to 10, we might consider a two-point change to be clinically meaningful. On the other hand, if we are looking at a pain scale ranging from 0 to 100, two points is likely not meaningful to patients. As a general rule of thumb, a 20% change can be used to guide your judgment. Let's look at an example. In this study, researchers randomized participants with sciatica to receive either acupuncture or sham acupuncture for four weeks. Their primary outcome was leg pain measured using a 100 millimeter visual analog scale immediately following the intervention and at 16 and 28 weeks. Their table provides two types of estimates. First, they provide change scores within each group. In the first column, we see that the acupuncture group experienced a decrease in pain of 22 out of 100 immediately following the four-week intervention. This is a small but clinically important change in pain. Participants in the sham acupuncture group experienced a decrease in pain of 15 out of 100. This change is smaller and likely not clinically important. The second and most important effect estimate provided is the difference between groups at each follow-up point. We see in the third column that the acupuncture group experienced a greater pain reduction by seven out of 100 points. This is considered a very small difference in change scores between groups, and it might not be clinically important. The findings suggest that acupuncture was not superior to sham in this particular study. So now that we have an idea of how much change occurred and whether a change favors the intervention group or some comparison, how confident are we that the same result would occur if we were to repeat the study again? Or more importantly, would this be the result if we were to provide the intervention to a patient in the real world? In the next video in our series on interpretation of findings, we will answer these questions with a discussion on statistical significance and confidence intervals.